Hello Otto and uh, welcome to this interview. It's really nice to be able to interview, interview you and the other uh, shortlistees for the Alice Davis Hitchcock Medallion. May I ask you to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Otto Somer smith uh, I'm an assistant uh, professor in architectural history at the University of Warwick. And you are in fact the second um, candidate we've uh, no, shortlistee, I should say, we've interviewed. Um, your, your former colleague, Louise Campbell, is also one of the shortlistees. So there must be something in the water at the University of Warwick to produce such wonderful work. Your book is called Boom Cities, Architect, Plan, Architect Planetics of Radical Urban Renewal in 1960s Britain. How did you come upon this topic and what is it about it that interests you? Um, the uh, book grew out of um, uh, my PhD, but um, more sort of personally about, I think there's a generational reason why I'm interested in this subject. Um, it's, I feel it's, an, it's a subject which has only been uh, dealt with um, polemically before and of a, I'm from a generation which uh, didn't live through it this first time and also uh, it's there are new open archives with it as a subject. Um, it was a lucky thing to come across, I think, um, in uh, unlike uh, related areas like uh, new towns or housing that had been uh, certainly not book length um, uh, uh, exploration of city centre redevelopment. Um, uh, so I was I was I was pleased for it, and I think I have a generational af affinity to the time, which is part of the um, generational turning of t taste, I expect. The, um, the new archives, you said, where, where were these? Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an archivally based book. A lot of, I found local authority archives uh, could be frustrating. Um, uh, and so um, a lot of the research was done at a the, the central government is a big a big part of it even when i want to get to the local um it was through that but uh, uh certainly i think um it involved uh uh traveling to uh maybe uh, uh, um uh, 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 less glamorous parts of england of provincial england um uh, uh, and to a lesser lesser less, uh, um, extent uh, uh other parts of britain but um uh, my uh, fellow PhDs going to um, uh, su sunnier, warmer places. Uh, so I spent a lot of time um, in, in Lancashire archives, but uh, 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 um, also you know, uh, central archives were important. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with Lancashire, having lived in Liverpool for a long time. I can, I can say it this. wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be a. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. You're the generation that came after as it were you, you said this and you you um feel you can look back maybe dispassionately i'm of course of the generation that um saw it all happen and in your book you described 1963 as a pivotal year i remember that year for the perfumo affair uh, not that i was told what it was actually about but there was something uh, the, the newspapers were always taken away before I could look at them. And the release of the Beatles' first album, Please Please Me, which I, of course, did get. What was happening at that time that uh, led to the ambition to uh, totally reshape British city centres? Um, uh, well, I, actually, I particularly like the two examples you've brought up as, um, uh, as sort of examples of what is happening. Um, uh, the Profumo Affair, I think in 1963, one of the points for picking this, uh, or one of the things that seeing this as the high point in the trajectory of inner city um, uh, redevelopment is that this was a moment, uh, this is a conservative moment as much as a socialist one. I think later on, um, uh, uh, British architectural modernism has often been used as a proxy for the welfare state. Um, and a lot of my characters in the book are not necessarily architects and planners, but the, the, the politicians are often 
ones from that Macmillanite moment, and maybe not the Macmillanite moment of um, the Profumo affair, which makes them look uh, uh, old-fashioned and out of touch, but a, 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 a modernizing conservatism, um, I, I think I show to be um, uh, extremely important in creating the moment. Um, and then uh, the Beatles love me do, uh, uh, the Beatles, uh, it's interesting, when Ian Nairn goes to Liverpool in, in the early 1960s, he, he, he feels that the Beatles are part of a resurgence of, um, of provincial England and that, that they're picking up on a similar mood of, of uh, uh, affluence and a breakdown of 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 um, certain hierarchies, which he, he thinks is very he, he links to the plans by the planners Walter Bohr and uh, Graham Shankland, ones that have been very controversial um, since to 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 that moment that um, uh, comes through um, uh, in the Beatles. And I suppose one of the things that I'm trying to do in the book is not show that this moment is something which is uh, 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 placed on a hostile public or, or society by a sort of um, coterie of architects, but the architects, um, their visions gave expression to things which are going on in the entire culture, um, of which um, the Profumo Affair and, uh, 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 and the Beatles' first LP are two very indicative ones. Well, um, it was, of course, from the School of Architecture at Liverpool University that the first Department of Civic Design emerged. Um, and maybe this is coincidental. It was not a Department of Town Planning. Well, not in the name, at least. Your book highlights a relatively new breed of professional, the architect planner, who you say were interested as much in town design or civic design as in town planning. Now, um, 50 years later, the architect planner barely exists. Why do you think this is? <laughs> I mean, uh, th there are a number of uh, reasons, and I'm not, going to, I'm not going to be able to completely uh, uh, answer that. But I think one of the things that um, surprises me is the moment that I describe is a relatively brief, brief one. Um, and in part, um, the... the uh, uh, where, 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 where architecture could be seen as the lead discipline in moulding society. Uh, a lot of this is the, the, the first feeling of it, the, the coming crisis of modern architecture is about the, 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 that it's based on an idea of continual economic growth, which uh, becomes more and more unsustainable as the 60s turn into the 70s. Um, one of the things I, I, I think um, is unusual, maybe, about my, um, you know, it, it's, it's um, one of the cliches that there is a disaster uh, 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 um, uh, to place uh, the crisis of modern architecture as maybe, maybe even symbolic of, of the crisis of the state more generally in the 70s and 80s. But what I, I've been surprised about is this is not just something that is pushed from outside, but is coming from the architect planners themselves. Uh, in a longer, and maybe I'll come to this, um, uh, 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 is there is a, 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 a breakdown of then um, an idea of uh, expertise more generally. Um, and it, but it doesn't happen overnight. But I, I think the fact it doesn't exist now is... Um, uh, 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 was uh, uh, the, the, it was in part that a lot of the problems that emerge around, say, the inner city crisis and deindustrialization could be could be could be explained through the failures of modern planning, um, and I think it became used as a proxy for that failure altogether, um, and that is one of the reasons why we still. Well, 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 certainly that confidence is, is, is gone, which I, I'm, I, I, I have ambiguous feelings about. Mm. It, it seems to have been replaced in terms of confidence by um, object buildings, by star architects or star architects. And um, I think this is, is really most unfortunate. But anyway, I will not get into that. Your book uh, contends that the way British cities were developed in the 1960s was the result of a set of assumptions and ambitions shared across 
the culture and not just because a set of architectural ideas were foisted on the country. Would you like to identify some of these? Well, um, I suppose in the first chapter, I, I, I took about three, so may, may, maybe I'll, I'll um, highlight those at the moment. Um, the first one is this um, cross-cultural uh, identification with particularly urban values, uh, um, which is often expressed through the rather slippery sort of 18th century term um, urbanity, which melds together this sort of idea of politesse with the sort of the, the excitement of the city. Um, so, and it's, it's a moment which is um, anti-suburban and uh, uh, about the um, benefits of density, which are both seen in um, uh, aesthetic ways, but also as a, as a social good. Um, the second sort of huge story which is going on at the time is the growth of private um, automobile uh, usage. Um, 1963 is also the date of um, traffic in towns, uh, the Colin Buchanan report, which uh, suggests or uh, as uh, either limiting car use or the complete rebuilding of cities uh, to accommodate cars. And the, the, the feeling of pressure of, uh, of cars is, is, is certainly one of um, uh, the things which, which, is, which is creating this and suggests things for the form of cities um, through segregation seems to be the answer, uh, whether that's through pedestrian precincts or through more mega structural things of building a city on top of on top of um, uh, 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 on top of cars and servicing. Um, and alongside that, and the third one is something I've already mentioned, um, which is this uh, idea of economic optimism, which I, I think really gives uh, gives fuel to powering this sort of um, ambition of what 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 people are, it, it is possible. Um, and this is a moment of uh, uh, mass consumerism uh, uh, coming in, of, of, of new forms of shopping, or, or, of new materials. Um, but a lot of it, especially in the types of cities where this happens most, is, is an uneasy optimism. And it's one which, um, uh, as deindustrialization is already beginning to bite, or, or, is, or is seen very, very close on the horizon, it is a very uneasy optimism and the type of um, brief moment where you can, well, the moment where you can suggest these huge plans uh, turns out to be a brief one because of that. Well, your, your book has um, at least two photographs that show these huge plans. There's one of Liverpool with these um, elevated motorways, some of which got built and um, much of which didn't and it's it's a it's a really rather frightening prospect and the other illustration is is the other photograph of a model is the famous model of um whitehall the leslie martin um redevelopment of whitehall which removed just about everything from trafalgar square down to westminster abbey with the uh, sole exception of the banqueting house and um you know that shows a huge um amount of confidence and um you know, we have enough trouble now putting a putting a, a roof light into a listed building. We couldn't possibly um, couldn't possibly demolish the whole of Whitehall. But it it, it shows a lot about what what the, these architect planners were thinking. Um, in the book, you you show how the modernist planning establishment were instrumental in in helping to create a new preservationist hegemony of ideas about the way to approach the built environment. And this seems on the surface to be ra rather contradictory. Could you elaborate on that a little, please? I think the 1960s um, has a curious dual role in being um, both this high point of urban renewal, but um, maybe not. You're a Victorianist, and I think that if you, if you look at the, if you think of the Victorian city and the way that railways were built through cities um, uh, uh, might have something to do with the way that motorways were built through cities. Um, and so I, 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 I see, I see it as both a high point, but also the end of the, 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 
that approach to cities. And what, 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 what's curious and what I suppose was unexpected is that the very same people who pushed it are also at the forefront of um, questioning it. it. Um, I think a lot of the way that the rise of preservationism has been told, for, 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 for very good reasons, has been told by um, members of the um, conservation movement themselves, which is, and I think this is partly through um, uh, Jane Jacobs' model of how, um, uh, uh, of the, 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 the little conservationists against the, uh, uh, the, the, the evil planner who do, 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 doesn't care for um, uh, the architecture of the past at all. Uh, looking at these people um, biographically, um, we, 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 we've talked about Liverpool before, and the planner for um, central Liverpool was a man called Graham Shankland, uh, who has been described, for example, by Raphael Samuel as the uh, butcher of Liverpool, and this sort of bogeyman idea. And this does not um, accord to the uh, uh, biography of that person uh, 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 and his deep interest in uh, uh, um, in preservation for the time. And also the trajectory of how he, uh, of how he came to himself question those, uh, the, the, the precepts of, of, of um, uh, 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 the planning that he did in the, the early 1960s. So I think it's, it, it's really helpful to look at these people and there are, uh, Shankland is one of the people that I, I, I spent a whole chapter on and the other is Lionel Brett, who have this curious duality in how they appreciate things, which I, I think is, um, can, can, can seem schizophrenic. Um, but it, the, so the only way to resolve that con seeming contradiction um, it, it, it is to say that actually I mean, it can be it can be resolved by seeing that these were things which the, 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 these contradictions were ones which were shared by the broader culture, uh, and it, it's not the idea that um, this is somehow the delayed explosion of a time bomb set by Le Corbusier, and that you know where I think a lot of planning histories of the sixties might start with. Um, uh, 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 Corbusier's paper architecture of the nineteen twenties, and, and think that. Um, architect planners were sort of uh, uh, dogmatically obsessed by this. And I, I, I don't think that, I don't think that accounts for what is going on um, at, at all. Um, so part of the thing is to downgrade modernism as a, uh, um, with a big M, uh, as, a, as an explicatory tool. I, I, I certainly, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, it, this is not a defense of the plans. Uh, like, like, and certainly um, the way um, Shanklin conceived of his Liverpool plan, the preservation is, a, is, is, a very tight, is too tightly defined. Uh, and the, the way they um, thought about roads, it, um, it, it's not a defense of that. But, but uh, I that idea and also that, that, that they were changing and they, they, that they themselves over uh, um, uh, well, as you quoted were, were instrumental in this new um, world where again as you say um, it's so difficult to put a put a put a light in but certainly not to uh, demolish the swathes of Whitehall. Well in your submission um, to the Alice Davis Hitchcock uh, medallion, you describe your book as a work of social planning history related to the emerging historiography that uses the built environment and urban policy to explore social and political change. I think you've been um, already sort of referring to this. Would you like to say a bit more about this approach? Um, the phrase social planning history was sort of, I, I, I got from um, William White's uh, Red Brick, um, uh, where, where he talks about social architectural history. Uh, and it's an idea that a focus on the built environment is a, 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 a method not just to understand um, 
buildings and architecture, but it is a way to illuminate um, abstract historical processes and political ideologies. Um, and that architectural history can be a way to do the social history of part the side of it is that I'm in, as interested in people as I am in buildings. Um, and I've been really, I think I've been really lucky that this has been part of the, the, this book in a way that when, when I started it, um, there wasn't a moment, but it, it, it's come out at a moment with a lot of other work, um, maybe outside of, outside of um, architectural history, but it, that there's been a, a symbiotic moment, which, uh, and I was, I was on a panel for this um, with uh, two books by, by, by scholars that I really admire of Simon Gunn and uh, Gal Solano, who are both interested in similar things, but coming from outside of architectural history. So, so I've been pleased and um, in reviews, it's been called um, uh, the new planning history. And I'm sort of pleased to be, pleased to be part of that. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I think the book, uh, um, can illuminate the, 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 uh, uh, the everyday built fabric of cities is a good place to rethink significant historical questions, um, wh whether it's the welfare state or social polarization, um, affluence, gentrification, um, and deindustrialization, so, uh, 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 and so on, because it's, it, it, it's where it's so visible. And I think this is um, also for British modernism, this is one of the, because it was so, the, 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 from the other side, you know, it, it was, it was, it, it, it has been seen as, has been, cons it, it's understood as political. So I, I, I don't think um, that British modernism is the same thing as all of the, those things, but it's a, good, it's a good place to track them and understand them. Well, much of architectural history is to do with buildings, and, um, and that, I think, is sometimes a mistake because the context and the greater political scene is, is obviously so important and really needs to be um, taken into account. So now you are um, an assistant, is it, Professor? Yes. I, 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 I wish it was called something. I wish it was called. Uh, I wish I wasn't called an assistant professor. I feel it's like being the, the sorcerer's apprentice. It's sort of. Um, I, I, um, I'm a. Uh, 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 what would you call a? a uh, yes, but uh, f first step. First step. Well, my hesitation was because I didn't want to call you an associate professor, um, which might be the wrong the wrong title. <laughs> and. Well, anyway, this was leading into my next question, which is now you've, you've secured yourself um, an ac academic position. Um, the expectations are that you're going to produce more work. So uh, what is the next book going to be about? Um, I hope it's going to be, um, when I get time to do it, it's going to be called Landscapes of Hope and Crisis, an environmental history of modern Britain. Um, and what I'm hoping with that is, I mean, it's in many ways, it's the next, it's the next bit. Um, I want to track the long 1970s and tell the history of the crisis of modernism alongside the, um, whether it happened or not, the movement um, is something I'm not sure, but the, 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 the crisis of social democracy and the um, move to a quote-unquote uh, neoliberal uh, polity. Um, and I want to do that again through it's going to be a, a west midlands book um so I'm, I'm spending a lot of time at, at the moment it's going to be um stoke on trent telford newtown um uh birmingham and the black country i think will be a lot of where the um archival stuff will be right well um all i can say is don't um don't delay too long because those of us who live through it all won't be around for much longer um although i hope i've got a few years left <laughs> so um that's been fascinating I can't, of course, give you any idea um, who might be winning this medallion, but um, I hope you've got, a, um, well, I'm sure you've got a very good chance. And, well, I'm so, uh, I'm so thrilled to have got this far, so and thank, you to, thank you to everybody. It's sort of, a, uh, uh, I couldn't be more chuffed. Great. Well, thank you so much for this interview, and uh, good luck with the award.
Thank you.